Fierce. We're here back with the Art of Confidence event. I'm Nicole Safely, the founder of I Am Fierce, and I am so excited this morning to bring Leslie Stevens into the space with us. Leslie is a branding and marketing strategist, but not just anyone. She is going to kind of, I think, challenge your thoughts about branding and marketing in the 21st century, and especially with regards to social media. So there's a little tease. She is support service-based entrepreneurs and getting consistent clients without having the pressure to post on social media. Ah, I love it already because she's focused on growing a business, um, helping you grow your business in the online world. And we often feel like it's expected that we have to be turning out all this endless content in order to get more clients. And I don't know about you, but I want to focus on my business, not necessarily being in social media, being bogged down with that all the time. So I love the message that Leslie's going to share with you. She absolutely disagrees that you have to be there 24-7, um, and she's here to shift you out of feeling like a full-time content creator and really into being a successful business owner that you are. Now, using her signature client connection method while integrating design and sales psychology, her clients are able to connect with strangers and convert them into paying clients quickly and easily. Um, I've got a little story about the whole stranger thing to you, Leslie. So <laughs> I'm really loving this because I never used to be able to talk to people either. I'll share in a minute. Um, so when we think about Leslie, you don't have to be held back by not having an audience and not being able to keep up with content or wanting to dance on video. Oh my gosh, what's your latest TikTok move? Please. Um, let's talk real business. And you don't need to be an influencer in order to impact um, the market and be an impact maker and build a successful online business. So with that, you guys, welcome, Leslie. I am so excited to dive into this. Um, it is a breath of fresh air. And I'm excited for our attendees to really get to dive into some um, traditional, almost traditional, kind of going back old school, let's bring it back. Like, connection cool and Talk a little bit about you and how you got started and I guess how you're not towing the social media line <laughs> absolutely thank you so much for having me Nicole I am very grateful to be able to share this message with everybody because of course I learned this the hard way and I don't want other people to have to go through it and I've also watched so many of my other friends some of them have been completely stopped from starting these incredible businesses because they're like, I don't want to post on social media. And then other ones have these incredibly successful businesses, but they are feeling like failures because they're not posting or they can't stay consistent with the content because they're worried about their clients. And I'm yeah. like, whoa, 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 we have this completely like backwards view of what success is in our business and what we're building and how we're building it. So how I got here was I did it the hard way. I did it backwards. I am actually a registered dietitian. That's what I went to college for. Oh, okay. And I started a health coaching business and I was in business for five years and I wanted to obviously help as many people as I could. So I had friends and family. I had other business owners. I had business coaches tell me, okay, just post online. You'll get clients. And yes, after years of trying to figure out the algorithm, how to create the best content, all of these things, I got clients here and there, but nothing that I felt really confident with that I was really building like a strong business, a successful business. It was more like, oh, am I going to get a client from this post or yeah. am I need to try a little bit harder? Do I need to be on stories more? And I am naturally introverted. So every day kind of felt like a, an uphill battle. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I've got to put myself out there. I've got to figure out how to take pictures of myself, get on stories, learn how to talk on camera. And I'm a very stubborn person. So <laughs> I of course it. It's going to happen regardless, <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. I made it happen. I was not great at the beginning. You know, I think we're always growing it at every aspect of that. But, you know, it was so hard that I burnt myself out. Yeah. I was working these 16 hour days because I first and foremost wanted to take care of my clients. So I was doing all my client work and then I was working on content. And if you've ever created content, you know, it's not as simple as like, oh, here's this picture. Let me post it. 
There's exactly. stress behind it. You take your time trying to make sure you're saying the right thing, the right tone, have the right message. Like there's so much that goes into it. And my husband and I were talking about starting a family. And I was like, I cannot keep going like this. You do it between posts. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I cannot awesome. build a family and concentrate on like raising a child and work 16 hour days. Yeah. Like it has to be a better way. And I, I naturally drifted away from my health coaching business and into branding because okay. even though I am a registered dietitian and went to college for nutrition, my lifelong love was design and art. I actually applied for co college for oh. art, but people were like, what are you going to do I with an art degree? Money. Yeah. And exactly. I was like, okay. So I was kind of in that area of like, okay, proving to myself that I was smart, proving to other people that I was smart by getting a science degree. And people had been asking me through my nutrition business. They were like, can you help me with my business and my branding? Cause you've done such a good job with yours. And I, I was like, okay, sure. And I did it for free for a long time. And then I was like, wait, I can <laughs> for this. So yeah. it was a natural transition from that nutrition business into my branding business. And I got connected with the woman who did the branding for Versace and like American Express and the Met, like all of these amazing brands. And she kind of took me under her wing and taught me a lot of things. And I learned so much from her. And then I had this moment where I was like, okay, I need to get on social media to get more clients. And I was like, wait, I've been fully booked for the first three months. I Without have this being on business. social. Yeah, I have this business. Nobody like would just find it online. It's all from the conversations I was having, the yeah. connections that I had made, the relationships that I built. And then I was being very strategic about like who I was connecting with, the conversations I was having with them that would lead to sales. And I was like, I didn't need to have all of this time and energy invested in social media when it was all about the relationships that I was building in the background. And that's when I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, I have to tell <laughs> everybody about this. Because 100%. I wish. Yeah, I wish that was something that I knew at the beginning because my skills, my magic was in that relationship building. And it's very difficult to build relationships on social media. And I truly believe you have to have conversations and build that connection. And those posts are just a place to start those conversations. Yes. But what if you just skip to the conversation in general? What if you go yeah. to who you want to talk to and start talking? Exactly. And, and you know, that is, it's what we've always known, right? Keep belly to belly and in sales has always been the way that we've done it. We got this new medium and everybody thought, oh, now I don't have to do the scary thing. I'll just push it out there. Like you said, you're an introvert. I also am, believe it or not, a, a bit of an introvert. And I've learned like, I, well, we can talk about that in the mindset segment, but really just flipping and getting curious about people. But the relationship piece, you guys, we know that's where it happens. All business, like even if I look at my corporate career, every position I've gotten since I was first hired subsequently has been from a conversation. Somebody calling and saying, hey, I'm here. Do you want to come work with me? It works. Like investing in those relationships. Tell me a little bit more as I love how this applies to the branding and marketing space. This is awesome. Yeah. So I actually went back and realized that in my first business, in my health coaching business, all of the people I thought I was getting as clients on social media were people I met in other places and had conversations with and had yeah. made connections with. That was just their place to reach out and send me a message because that's what they were comfortable with. Mm -hmm. all about like listening to yourself, realizing, okay, just because we see something all the time, we're scrolling through Instagram, we're scrolling through TikTok, we see, okay, this is how you keep up with the algorithm. I got, I made this much money off of this post. That doesn't mean that's the only way to do it. And you can build your own path to success. It's just having that confidence in yourself to take your own path and build on your own skills. Because there's also this 
thinking that I fell into. It's like, okay, focus on the things that you're bad at and get better at them. Mm -hmm. But what if you focused also on the things that you're good at and just compound those things and get better at those natural things and your natural born skills? And what if I'm not confident? You know, so you said I'm an introvert. And I've got to build relationships. When I started thinking about that in an offline world, it was very scary for me. Like I started off in direct sales and my husband and I were talking about this as I was thinking of this event. He's like, do you remember when you used to drive? I would drive two hours to a mall to warm chatter people, to bring them into, you know, this sell them stuff that I was selling, honestly. I would drive. Did I ever, I didn't even get out of the car. Um, I would look at the door, think about it, start crying and then get back in my car and drive back home. And so how do you, for somebody who's an introvert and thinking about, okay, you're telling me I need to go offline. How do I begin to look to build those relationships? Like, what did you do when you realized maybe it was happening naturally, but you had to step out somehow um, to begin to, to take that path? So there are a couple things. And the very first thing that I always have to remind myself is that it is not about me. Ah. When you put yourself out there and you're like, oh, I need to make a sale. Oh, I need to make a client. You make it about you. Mm-hmm. And the the switch that you need to make because you're in business, you're being of service. You are here to support somebody, make a transformation with whatever your product or service is. It's for them. You're just kind of the vessel. You're the guide to get them from where they are now to where they want to be. So it's about how can I support this person? Where does this person feel like they're stuck? How can I communicate to them that they don't have to stay where they like where they are right now? And once you kind of take yourself out of that equation, it's much easier to put yourself out there. And of course, it's still terrifying. (laughs) But with practice, you get better. So I used to be terrified of public speaking. I used to be terrified to start conversations with people. The first time I got on on a podcast, I had a panic attack, like, oh gosh, very real thing. But now I'm a podcast host. Yeah. Things like that. Like, I truly believe you need to just try things and yes, it's going to be scary. No, you're not going to be perfect. I don't think perfection is an actual thing. So being okay with going into things imperfectly and trying them, everything you do is kind of like building a muscle. So you're not going to go into the gym and do curls with fifties right away. Like Uh you have to start with fives, maybe tens, maybe you start with twenties. Everybody starts at a different place, but you can grow that muscle over time. So even though it's still maybe scary to go start a conversation or go put yourself out in front of a small group, or even speaking on a stage, the more you do it, the more used to it, you're going to get. Wow. I, I adopted the word curiosity a few years ago And for me, that really changed things like the connections I was able to make. Um, I totally get what you're saying about making it about them and not you, right? When you can look at someone and ask, hey, Leslie, tell me about your vision. What's your vision for your business? It doesn't matter. And I'm a connector. So if I can just focus on you and maybe it's me, maybe it's someone else, listen, you're going to find, and that relationship that builds it right. When I, nobody asks people about themselves, you know, Mm -hmm. and really want to know the answer that one thing. And just getting curious about people draws them in. They want to be in your space and they, if they are going to buy your thing or have your, take your class or whatever they, you know, are they going to make a referral? Oh my gosh, my friend, Nicole is doing X, Y, Z. Leslie's got this branding thing going on. I think she could help you. Like it just begins there. So I love that stepping out of yourself, out of what you have and getting into them for sure. My favorite question to ask at the beginning of any conversation is like, you have your specific area that you work in. So I'm in branding and marketing. If I'm going to talk to somebody for a purpose, my first question is always, what's the most important thing to you about your branding and marketing? 
and that will streamline your whole entire conversation. So you don't have to think about your pitch. You don't have to think about this, this, and that of what you have to sell. You're Mm -hmm. speaking to them. You're speaking to what they want and what their desires are, because that's what you have to understand. The sales psychology part is We love to think we're logical people. We love to think that all of our purchasing decisions are like, okay, let me analyze this This is the right thing. 95% of our purchases are based off of emotion. Mm. So what's keeping that person up at night? What do they really think they need? What's most important to them? Getting down into those deep desires and understanding that if you are truly the person who can support them through that transformation, it's going to be really easy for you to talk them through that conversation and be like, this is what we can do together. Yeah. And that almost becomes your brand. So when I think about branding, you know, it's colors, I'm actually getting, you know, colors for I am fierce, what works a little bit of psychology in there too, right? Fonts, but it feels like to me, you're helping people also create a brand that's a little bit deeper than just the aesthetics, right? Um, Yeah. And really getting into them. Tell me a little bit about you, kind of how you form that up with people. So with, with the way I help people with their branding, it's really focused on, okay, clearing out all of the weeds. You want to clear out like all the things that you think you're supposed to do, all of the things other people are doing, trying to keep up with these brands and businesses that are 10 years down the line and focusing where you're at here in your first one to three years or something like that and getting real with who you help, how you create your transformation, how that aligns with your beliefs and how you can help them. So you dig into, obviously, the visual part of your brand is the storytelling. And then you have the actual verbal way and the tone and the personality of your brand. Those are all things that cause people to feel things. That's the emotion. That's how you're getting people to buy from you. You don't have to have the most perfect looking brand. It's just about what is speaking to your ideal client. There are going to be brands that are going to be high end and track that high end customer that knows they're going to pay a large price point for whatever they're getting. There's also other ways that you can brand that are friendly, relatable, targeted towards families who are looking for a discount. But you can say that with your colors, but you can also say that with the way that you're speaking to them and what you're providing. So it, but it's all building the roots of your business. So something that you are so rooted in that you can then build and scale and support your clients and support a growing business. And it's not tangled up in all of these weeds of confusion and people don't really know what you do or where to go. Yeah, that's, that's really key is, you know, I think making it easy for them to know what you, what you do, but then how do I work with you? You know, how do I do this? And you almost have to kind of spell it out, right. Um, Being really simple and like, not straight to the point. I think, you know, do this, this is the thing I just want, have a problem. Here's how I'm going to solve it, put it together. You're done. Solve that problem. So I'm really curious. I've been building my brand online in our I Am Fierce community. And I actually do have a vision for doing offline events and things. So for somebody who's been really focused in social media, like what are the one or two things that you would say, you know, here's a first step into doing this a different way and doing it not necessarily all online? Like, where would I go? What would I start with? So I would look at the things that you're really good at. So if you're, you've already built something online, it's working fantastically for you. How, how have you done that? Have you done that through building relationships with other people and having collaborations or have you done it organically over time, just building your audience, leverage those skills first in the offline world. If you've done it by speaking to people in small groups, Go and create small groups in real life. Go look at other businesses where your ideal client is already hanging out. Mm -hmm. Because 
your ideal client has similar interests. If you're a health coach, maybe they're at a spin studio. If you are in branding and marketing, maybe you go to a co-working space where you know people are working on businesses. Go out there and find these places where your audience is already hanging out and share your message with them. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I, as you say this, I'm thinking about the people who are most active in my community are people that I met offline, like Mm -hmm. literally at this table, we sat and had coffee, you know, in our, I am fierce group. And they're the ones that are trying to, you know, bring other people in, but it's those personal relationships. It's not about necessarily strangers seeing some cute banner and they decide to click in. It's really at least the ones that have been most engaged absolutely have been people that I've known and resonate with the message and like want to further that. So that's kind of interesting. We spend a whole lot of time in posting and trying to find the right strategy when really it's super simple. Um, What do you think, how do you think that helps to accelerate people's businesses, when you take all of that middle stuff out, like what have you seen with your clients as far as satisfaction in their business results changing? Like, give me some examples of what you've worked with in your space with your clients. Oh, you just got me really excited because there's so (laughs) much, there's so much. We think building relationships takes so much time. And we think it's going to be like, oh my gosh, I have to spend so much time and energy invested in this one person. But a lot of people are spending so much time and energy on their social media marketing. Mm -hmm. And usually it's significantly more time to create a post and have somebody see it for like, what, 0.2 seconds, 0.3 seconds. Maybe they read it, maybe they don't. Mm -hmm. Then they're not even going to see all your content. So you have to get this exposure to them to kind of build a relationship with them where they are kind of getting this curated, like who you are and glimpses of your messages. But with, I call our methods of marketing just strategic conversations. Mm -hmm. So different styles of conversations that are just showing proof that you are the person to solve their problem. And you do this in so many different ways. And it's cutting people's marketing time down from like, three or four hours a day to an hour a week. Wow. Because they're able to use the same message because their message is so clear. And then they can tailor it to whatever group they're going into or whatever person they're talking to. And it's just small, tiny tweaks. So it's only taking them an hour a week and they're bringing in clients more quickly because you can have one conversation with a small group of 10 people And the conversion rates are typically high because if you're engaging with them, if you're asking questions, if you're being strategic again about the way you're structuring this conversation, they're going to know, like, and trust you so much faster because they're going to know you, your style, if you're the right fit, very, very fast. So off of the back end of that conversation or that small training, they're going to be like, oh, I want to learn more. Let me have a deeper conversation with her or, hey, I'm going to buy from her. And that happens a lot more than you would think. And we think on social media, we're going to post this thing. They're going to be like, oh, I like her. And they're going to buy off the back end. And that's just not how, like the reality of how it works. They still want to have a conversation with you Mm -hmm. and get to know you but you build that relationship so much more deeply with all of these different conversations that you can have. I love that. And I, you, you actually got me excited. I'm thinking, Oh, what groups could I go to? There's a couple of things that are coming up for me. Sales psychology. Um, you said, you know, get people together. Maybe you do a training or some kind of offering when people are, when especially women are together, like there's some social pressure. They see one one of their girlfriends is going to do your program. Oh my gosh, you know, I'm going to do it too. Like you start to get that excitement. Other people start selling, you know, I see this, I see that. Um, so I can see the, and I've experienced it. This is what's boggling me. It's like, how did I get so far away from this? Um, and the other side of it, you know, like I've worked um, and been in some trainings with like Grant Cardone and Shanda Sumter and, um, you look at, you know, building funnels and all of this stuff and they will tell you, I mean, when you actually get deep into the training, 
the thousands, millions of dollars they spend on advertising because of the number of people you have to pull through a funnel in order to get the people to buy. And most people, even though it's painted as this big rosy, oh my gosh, you could do this without leaving your house. The reality is there's a lot of money and a lot of, of work that goes into creating something that actually works. Whereas you're open to just go talk, give your message, connect and sell. And um, yeah, that's really power. That's really, that's really powerful. I feel kind of silly, actually. <laughs> no, it feels silly. We all need to be reminded of it. But like the best part is, is when you're so intentional about the groups you're speaking to, you already know they're your ideal client. So you're not just throwing your message out, hoping somebody's going to catch it and they're going to be the right person. Exactly. You already know they're the right people you're talking to. And yes. you save so much time and energy because you don't have to hope for the best. You yeah. are going into every action with intention. You're already filtering beforehand. So you don't have to spend that much money on advertising and marketing beforehand. You already know where you're going and you know who you're speaking to and you tailor your message to that. Your conversion rates are going to be great. Yeah, I love that. You're also, you know, the minute that you go online and um, this may be tangential, but I think it totally applies. Um, about a year and a half ago, I got laid off. I was looking for work before in my field. Like I said, I'd always been just called, you know, Hey, do you want to come work? This wasn't the case at this point. And so I'm putting all these applications out there. What I realized really quickly was that, um, I was now a small fish in a really big pond because all of the work now is virtual, right? Back in the day when you have to go in the office, well, you, you are naturally limiting the pool of applicants that you're even going to com compete against. And I think the same is true in business, right? The minute that we go online, now it's not that you're competing with the other five businesses in your regional area. You are now competing with not just the United States, but the entire world of people who are in your space, how are people ever going to see you? You know, mm -hmm. so when you go this route, like you become a big fish in a smaller pond and likely, you know, you're going to be one of a handful of experts in your area that, you know, can dominate. So it makes it so much easier. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> There's I one feel thing. really stupid right now. Like, why am <laughs> I even fighting this? Not. <laughs> yeah. We can all do things differently. And there's always an opportunity to grow and scale our business in, the, in this way. Yeah. And who I work with specifically are service providers. So they're usually capped at serving a certain amount of people. Mm -hmm. And I always talk to them and I'm like, okay, you're trying to build an audience of how many hundred thousand, 500,000 million followers, but yeah. how many of those people can you really serve? Right. And you need to talk to those people one at a time if you're going to provide your service to them. So why are you trying to go for hundreds of thousands instead of one? Yeah. And when you start thinking that way, you kind of unblock yourself because uh -huh. you're like, okay, one is much easier than getting to 100,000. One is much easier than trying to reach 10,000. All of these numbers that we have somehow made up in this social media world that we need to reach before we can come become successful. But talk to that one person, get that first client, then get that second client, but it's still one conversation at one a time. time. Mm -hmm. And you can go down the street and talk to somebody in a coffee shop. Exactly. I love it. Leslie, this is awesome. I want you to share how you work with people. You said you have a podcast. I would love to turn people on your podcast um, to get more of this greatness. And then I know you prepared something for our audience to step into and um, have a free course. So I'd love for you to share that. And then the big deal, like how do you actually work with clients? What offering do you have? Um, let's share that as we wrap up and then we'll talk a little bit about how people can connect with you. Yeah, absolutely. My podcast is called Not an Influencer, an Impact Maker. And we talk about all of the other organic marketing strategies to grow your business besides just social media marketing. And then I have a free training for everybody to watch. It's called How to Book Consistent Clients Without Having to Post on Social Media. And then 
my course is called Not an Influencer, More Sales Without Social Media. And I teach them the whole client connection method and it takes them through branding, marketing, and sales. So you get how to create that aligned brand clarity, how to position yourself to have more conversations that convert, and then how to build a system out of those conversations so that you know exactly what you need to do every week, every month, every quarter to hit your client targets and grow and scale your business. Fantastic. I am going to be in your course. (laughs) I'm just saying it now because it really aligns with the things that I've been struggling with. Um, The one book that comes to mind for me is the E-Myth Revisited. If you guys haven't read that, you need to read it because it's true of online and offline businesses is the fact is most of us spend 90% of our time in all of the activities that are not our core business. And when you add social media into the mix and you're having to spend that, my guess is that you're also not a social media marketing expert. Um, And you can spend a lot of time in courses, learning how and hoping to do this. Um, It can be simple. And so if you want to spend more time doing what you love, like your core business, then I think these strategies definitely make sense. Like, and it's, it's real business. Um, I could go on and on. I find that solopreneurs, particularly like we all got sold this bill of goods that, oh, we can have a million dollar business just from your computer. And you likely haven't gone through any marketing training, any branding training in your career. Like people do this stuff for a living. And um, that's why I love engaging with people like you, Leslie, is to bring that professionalism and to show us the real techniques that traditional businesses use in branding and marketing and sales and wrapping that in a nice package. So we don't have to spend our time trying to find it and then implement, you know, all the things. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, You guys, this is a key piece to your business and to building the confidence in your branding and marketing strategy. So I definitely want you to go out get the course, if get the free course, dive in get to know what Leslie has to offer. You feel so go get her class, get in there and really get the strategies because this is going to set you up for success. I just know that. And thank you for sharing. Um, This was amazing. I will provide the links to the freebie and to the registration for the class, as well as the podcast. And so you can have all kinds of ways to connect with Leslie. Leslie, I'd love to invite you into our I Am Fierce community as well. If you'd like to join us over there at some point, um, we'll get you guys all connected with Leslie and everything that she's doing to help us get out there and find those clients and have a successful business. So thank you so much. Thank you so much.